That's Arthi. That's Noor. And you're listening to The Reality Is. See, now we're rocking and we're rolling, okay? You look, <laughs> you look very cozy in your robe. I took, so Maya ended up not having swim today. Uh-huh. So they came home early. So they had dinner early and Kirsty passed out around eight o'clock. And Maya went up to read her book and talk to her grandmother around 8.20. And so I went and took a shower and I was done by 8.30. I'm done and I'm sitting around and I'm getting sleepier. Oh no. So I gained about an hour and a half of time. Time yeah this evening because there was no activity no kid activity today so I'm thinking that's an hour and a half that I could have used productively somewhere no 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 <laughs> this is a myth this is what women do to ourselves we were like oh I have free time from this one thing that I have to do all the time so now I should use this free time to do something other like no you should just relax which so you I look like you did. You're very yeah, relaxed. Right I now. took a sh- a very relaxed shower. Um, I put some retinol on my wrinkles. <laughs> I took my time putting it on. You so didn't gave, just slap it on each your face. Now, yeah, otherwise I just slap it on, slather <laughs> it on. But today I gave attention to every one of my wrinkles, and I was like, I discovered a few new ones. <laughs> Is it like how you talk to your plants and they flower? Does that happen to wrinkles? <laughs> do you, if you talk, if you talk to your wrinkles, do they fill up? Do those, do those <laughs> wrinkles fill up and plump up? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, we'll Thank find you. out. I talk we'll a find- lot. To my wrinkles. <laughs> we'll imagine. find out if it helps. But giving up, um, talk to all of your wrinkles. Well, yeah. Um, what did give me wrinkles was this week's Married to Medicine and Shots of Sunset (laughs) oh my god how much of toxicity did we have to deal with I needed detox it was like back to back yeah we needed a detox is it on TV back to back also? yeah it is on TV back to back (laughs) so you watch it back to back it was like oh my god (sighs) I uh, I don't know. I, so so here's the deal. After all of that, Mike has still not surpassed Jax necessarily as the worst person ever. On TV. So here's so Mike has a little ways to go, but he's getting close. I think what would have sealed the deal is if Mike went and got somebody pregnant in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was actually in the end, I was kind of like surprised that he didn't get violent with anybody. I mean, he was not moving and he was there. And but when Destiny was pushing him, he didn't lay hands on her. And I was actually surprised by that restraint because I totally expected him to just go off and just break stuff, attack I'm, people. I was, okay, so I, yes, I agree. It was surprising that Mike didn't attack her, like physically mm-hmm. force anything on oh, her. Yeah. But I want to also believe that standing in one place and using your strength to not move when a woman consistently asks you to leave is also a type of violence. Mm-hmm. No, I'm just saying yeah. that I I was so nervous in yeah. the moment that yeah. I was like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. He's gonna he's gonna do something now. He's gonna do something now. So which just made me think about what is Paulina doing going home with this guy? Because I feel like he was suppressing yes. some anger and violence that he was going to just erupt when he went home. I was scared for Paulina getting into the cab with him. It's very scary. So we're actually starting today's episode the same way Shaz of Sunset started, which was like a fight at the party and then two Mm. days earlier. So let's talk about Shaz of Sunset. So Shaz of Sunset, first we got this preview of this Halloween fight, but then we Mm -hmm. see Elijah and Shumps on a play date. And when Mm -hmm. Gigi's talking about all the things she needs to pack for her son, I was like, hmm, this makes me not want to have another child. (laughs) (laughs) Especially the the poop that spreads. The poop that spreads. Oh, my God. Yes. It was the poop that spreads and then... The thought of what if the baby gets cold and then what if the baby gets too hot? And I I like thought about it and it like it did give me anxiety. And also the other thing that happens is when you have to plan all those outfits and so you keep them in your bag if you don't use them. But then what ends up happening is your baby grows. Yes. And then the next time you do need it because the poop has grown, the outfit doesn't fit, then you look like an unfit mother. 
because <laughs> you didn't pack the right size clothing for your kid. Uh, it was a lot. <laughs> but yeah. weirdly, it's been weird to hear Gigi make a lot of sense this season. Right? I mean, just not even just on the show, but even off the show. <laughs> yeah, like, like, how we're much? Murdering Kelly Dodd. Oh, she's been murdering Kelly Dodd. That's right. And everything that she's saying, it's making so much sense. Like, where was the sensible Gigi all these years? Like, how many doses of <laughs> doses of marijuana did she have to? Like, how much did she have to inhale to finally get to the place where she was able to function? normally i think it's something about her becoming a parent i think she feels very it's not even just her becoming a parent it's becoming a parent in the way that she did right like i think a lot of yeah yeah i think it's very empowering i think for a long time Gigi felt like she needed to do the box and things like get married and get a husband Mm -hmm. and have a baby Mm -hmm. that way but ultimately it seems like she just wanted to have a kid and her being able to do it the way she did with a donor and on her own and and all of that, I think it is empowering. And I think that maybe makes her feel a lot more secure in who she is as a person. And it mm-hmm. makes her pop off less. Yeah. She and MJ decide that they need to help Reza help himself. And I was like, you guys are doing yeah. great until you thought you could help a lost cause. <laughs> I know. I was like, he's still a kid who's still struggling from the pain he experienced as a child. No. No. No, 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 no. This Mm -mm. is an adult who knows what he's doing. He's doing it for his paycheck and he's doing it because he gets off on it. Okay. This has nothing to do with his childhood. Do not, do not fall for that, Gigi and MJ. Mm -hmm. Unless it's your storyline that you're trying to create. (laughs) Yes. This is not the, yeah. This is a grown ass adult who knows what he's doing. Yeah. Speaking of, Reza getting off on it. We see Reza using some sort of a suction like massager. That yeah, it was a sudden massager. Well, he had the sudden massager, and then he yeah. had like a a leg massager Ooh, that yes. seemed like torture. Yeah, he was going to give himself an embolism. Like you know, <laughs> he's going to have the the exact opposite of what happens when you wear compression socks. He's going to have the opposite because he's he's going to pump too much blood into his <laughs> upper body by doing that. <laughs> Well, it cracked me up because he went to go do this like weird massager suit thing and Adam was like, I'm going to go take a shower yeah. and like just left. And it almost felt like Adam had seen the massager in the past and been like, I'm going to exit the room because this is uncomfortable <laughs> for me. <laughs> Uh, so we find yeah. out that Destiny and Paulina have been talking and Paulina has been coming to open her heart to Destiny and tell her that Mike does this shit all the time and yeah. she just puts up with it. And then she tells her friends or she tells De- Destiny, she confides in Destiny, and then she feels immediately guilty for sharing what's really happening. I wrote down because I had watched Mary to Medicine first that this uh. feels like a lot like what Contessa says, which mm-hmm. we'll talk about, where she feels guilty for complaining complaining to other people about what's going on in her marriage. Mm -hmm. I I think think that's that's very common and that's Mm -hmm. very understandable. However, Mm -hmm. Mike told her, Paulina, that texting with complete strangers, sexting with complete strangers is his version of porn and it's Mm. not necessarily cheating. Mm. And she believed that. We I wonder if Paulina there. has... <laughs> we have to pause there. <laughs> yeah. Like, gave a bad taste. I, I wonder if Paulina has some level of like guilt and shame from being a divorced woman. Because it sounds like the way they've talked about it is Paulina got married really young. And she had kids. And then she got divorced because she didn't want to be in that relationship mm-hmm. anymore from when she was really young. And I personally know women who are like who have been in very similar situations and they find themselves single in their 30s and their 40s and they will often still carry the guilt of of leaving their marriages and leaving a traditional life even though they're living a non-traditional life. Do you know what I mean? And it feels like maybe Paulina carries some of that or alternatively that mm-hmm. Paulina is just a thirst bucket who wants to be on <laughs> TV. We, we are, it could be either, right? Because she does come on camera and cry and reveal that this has happened 10 other times 
which is okay you he has shown you this 10 other times you brought it into the show you waited until the show started Mm -hmm. you didn't mention this 10 other times to the rest of the group and then all of a sudden you were doing a group text sending that information and starting a storyline so i feel like okay then you are a thirst bucket But Mm -hmm. at the same time, not to minimize what other women like Contessa might be going through where it is a hard, hard thing to do because we build our lives with somebody based on trust Mm -hmm. and loyalty. Mm -hmm. And that is the one thing that we do not want to break. Even if it is broken by the other person, how do you hold a moral high ground and say that I did not do it, but he did it when you are also, you feel like you're breaking that trust by talk, speaking about it to others. So it's, it's a, it's a complicated issue where you don't want to be the one talking about it. You want everybody to find out, but you don't want to be the one bringing it up because then it makes you feel like you betrayed too. Mm -hmm. And it's something, it's a hard thing to, for women to overcome, even though we should, it's very hard thing for us to overcome. Yeah, because the patriarchy loves to condition our brains into thinking that we're probably the ones that are fucking up. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But having said that, I don't know where I stand on Paulina. I don't feel, uh, uh, why why would you come on camera and talk about it? And then you want to go back. And then you want to show up to Destiny's thing with Mike Mm -hmm. as if nothing happened. But then call Destiny the morning off and tell her, don't bring it up because I don't want to deal with it. I don't want you to be in the middle of it. Then you show up with Mike. And then you, when people are questioning him, you're trying to tell Mike, hey, shut up. You're being an idiot. And looking depressed and scared and all of that and you know why even come then why even be part of this if you don't want to be talking about it i think she does want to be talking about it but i think she's also scared of mike you know anybody would the way he was that's what i meant that he was so calm that it actually scared me more because he was he the in the past Mike would have been he would have been breaking things and being violent and this he was just way too calm for me to actually even grasp. I thought he was going to punch somebody and he did not, and that made me even more scared of him. Yeah, I think he's a terrifying person. Mm-hmm. We see Gigi meet with Reza, and again, really is a voice of reason. Mm-hmm. She tells Reza that he needs to stop outing people and either accept people for who they are or just move on. Yeah. And this is specifically in regards to Mike. And I was like, that yeah. was a very nice scene. She was like, <laughs> why is it Reza's business what Mike does? Shocking. Mike cannot be faithful. It, we, we all know that. So why yeah. is it Reza's business to get involved in that? Why yeah. are you involved in that? And she was perfect in that scene. On the other hand, Reza was not a perfect realtor in that scene. Why would no. he bring Gigi, Gigi to that house? She has a small <laughs> kid, multiple animals. And this was a nightmare of a house. Like, is there where Reza has fallen? Like, would Reza <laughs> survive a million dollar listing LA? Like, would he? how would he compare? Oh, to all God. of those guys. No, he would never survive million dollar listing. I mean, it's shocking to think about like the fact that Reza makes a good amount of money through real estate, but then also like a like enough money for him to be rich. Yeah. Yeah. Reza's rich. And then also then to think about like, holy shit, then those other realtors are so much richer. Like even the right. selling sunset women are more yeah. rich than Reza, yeah. you know? Right. Oh my God. Speaking of, did you see what's happening? Did you ever watch Million Dollar Listing New York? Yeah. You remember Luis? Yeah. The like really cute guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know left. Luis. Yeah. What happened? Oh my God. It's so sad. What's happening? What? I know he, he something he posted online where he was just going off Instagram or something like that. No, well, I don't know about that, but- yeah. He, he has got a baby mama. It's an Indian uh-huh. girl named Nikita Singh. Yeah. And Nikita has posted a whole thing about how she has been abused by Luis. <gasps> and she escaped her marriage, like her relationship with him in America with their daughter, Leela. And they went to the UK where she feels safe. And he's essentially telling her that she kidnapped the baby <gasps> and is trying to like come for her. And between him and his contacts and his family that she feels feels scared and she's seeking rest- refuge in the UK. And now she's getting like human rights international lawyers to fight her case because the situation with Luis is so bad. <gasps> I was like, what? 
What? I know we saw her briefly when she gave birth to the baby and yes. uh, Louis talked about it and Louis was such a he was a clingy person he was like on the verge of you know self-harm at one point but yeah but he, I didn't think he would get to the he would abuse somebody else I know so. wow yeah speaking of toxic men <laughs> Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 So oh. Louise, not so great. Not so mm-hmm. great. I mean, this is all mm-hmm. the and there's like a go funny. Even but or... even Louise would make a lot more money than Reza. That's all I'm Oh saying. yes. Oh my <laughs> god. Yeah. Louise could make more money than Reza in jail. Yeah. Because of all the contacts these people have. Yeah. Well, so now we also found out the source of Sutton's roller is this woman named Nurse Jamie. Oh. Nurse Jamie makes those dumb rollers that Reza had. Is that also- right? Mm-hmm. Oh wow! Yeah, and she throws give it nurse into like, Jamie a like, show. Yeah, give Nurse Jamie a show. She puts it into those like Fab Fit Fun boxes or whatever. I think, and oh. that's why like these rich ladies get them. I guess like the rich lady version of Fab Fit Fun. Maybe they just buy it. From is nurse there Jamie. one? There probably is one that we don't know. Of. We will know. We won't know until we are in the circle. Oh my I god! No, one. there is one. There is one by um, Nina Garcia has one from top mm-hmm. from Project Runway. Nina Garcia has one. It's like very expensive. Uh-huh. Each and box exclusive. is like a hundred bucks. Yeah. But it apparently, apparently the, the stuff inside of the box is worth like a grand. Wow. I briefly thought about signing up for it. And I was like, I shop at Old Navy. <laughs> <laughs> but you could do a month or two of this and see what comes through. Whatever comes through, I could then sell it. Sell it. Yeah. And I could make money. Yeah. I'd invest it into the podcast. Right. <laughs> no. But we could sell it on our Desi websites. Nobody would know. <laughs> yes, we have Desi websites that we sell. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, man. So Reza and MJ have like a nice discussion. Again, I'm very confused. It still to me feels like production is being like, okay, it's time for you guys to film a scene again. Yeah. Because MJ still feels very uncomfortable with Reza. It's she, weird. It's so yeah. weird. Reza is being his usual self. I can tell that Reza is okay. But MJ, is so, she's not being normal. She's not being her normal self. She's being no. extra careful, extra nice, extra fake. I don't know. Yes, extra fake. Speaking of fake, there's a fake MJ that comes to Destiny's Halloween party. What did you think about Nima's costume? <laughs> kind of loved it. Nima did so much, first of all. Nima did his, uh, he got his rating of his feet up, wiki feet up. Yeah. Right? <laughs> he got that up. Uh, and he's like, I don't know why, but oh, Mike's uh, wiki feet rating is, is kind of low. I'm like, that's because of the who the foot is attached to. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the foot. It has to do with the person it is attached to. That's yeah. where the rating is low. But also, Neva is one awkward dude. <laughs> he's so awkward that I he's feel... He's awkward with the women that come. He, he's like extra smiley. And I don't know. He's you know so he awkward has? with the makeup people. He's you, so awkward. I know. Let me tell you what he has. Neva has like a... It's like a fat man problem. So Nima used to uh-huh. be a bigger guy. Okay. Yeah. And I'm yeah. not saying fat like in like a derogatory way. I'm uh-huh. a fat person. Fat is just a way to describe a person who is bigger. Okay. It's not yeah. in like good or bad. And I actually think Nima is very cute. Yeah. He's probably my kind of guy, actually. I'd be into a guy who looks like Nima. Yeah, me too. That's why it feels so um it feels sad to see him be that <laughs> <It's> awkward. So, <laughs> so I think that Nima's used to being like a bigger guy and he had to be extra nice and everything then. And now he's not that big. He probably gets a lot of women. And then now he's still doing that thing. And it's like so uncomfortable because I'm like, I don't know if you're trying to fuck this makeup artist because it almost felt like he did the same thing with yeah. like when he went to see Tommy and he was like trying to tell Tommy about his costume. I felt like yeah. he was giving the same energy he gave to the makeup yeah. artist to Tommy. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Yeah. Tommy? What is <laughs> what is happening? Nima, calm down. Calm down. <laughs> be yourself. Calm down. Be nerdy. Don't be, you know, goofy like this. You're a nerd. Just be a fat nerd. And that's it. Yeah. Own the inner fat kid and just let it be. Because I think I that's why I find it awkward is that I know exactly what he is doing because I've done it all the time. So <laughs> like, <laughs> I do it all the time, but I'm like, oh, it's like seeing yourself. 
The mirror is too bright for our Yeah, theme. yeah, it's too bright for me. Reza dresses like Shannon Bedore at that Real Housewives of Orange County party. Yes. <laughs> well, Reza dressed like a clown, right? Is, it, no, is he, he a clown? No, he was dressed oh, like was a it? 1970s like flower power person, but he was mostly dressed like Shannon Bedore from that Real Housewives of <laughs> Orange County Halloween party uh, where her and Kelly are going, who? You? i thought Uh, mj looked awesome oh my god mj looked so fly she She looked looked so so cute so cute and then nima keeps saying mj uh uh me you uh." (laughs) she's like she's like so confused she's like who are you trying to do like why are you wearing my clothes (laughs) nima keeps trying to make fetch happen but i did crack up when nima's like at the end of the party, all of you can have turns having sex with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this is why we keep Nima around. Because sometimes Nima's hilarious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Mike comes into the party and he's very upset about the way that Gigi greets him at the door. Apparently he wants to be worshipped or something. It's mm-hmm. so weird. It's like, yeah. he came in. He came in angry. He came yes. in angry. He came in pissed off. He came yeah. in like, they're going to come for me and I'm going to squash them. And he just, yeah, he came in messed up already. Like he was on something. He was already on some kind of medication substance something. Yeah. And I think that he came in, they must have been fighting from home because as soon as they get there, Paulina goes to the bar and has multiple drinks and is mm-hmm. like immediately drunk. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird because this is the only time I've ever liked Destiny and truly felt sorry for her Mm -hmm. in this situation. So they start playing a game where they're asking these hypothetical questions and it's everybody's like shading each other. Yeah, but all the answers for all of those questions were, Mike, did you really... (laughs) I mean, Other than who has a witch in your family, that could be Gigi, it could be anybody, it could be the whole table. No. But then everything else was Mike, and Mike knew it. He was like, yes. But the thing is, everything else could have also been the rest of them. You know, yes. they say like, oh, who has the highest credit card bill? And Gigi's like, oh, me, every every month. Every five, month. All my five credit cards, all of them. You know, Yeah, like, but they kept showing Mike, and Mike is like, mm. Like, because I think Mike he, took everything. Mike was having a private experience yes. the entire time. Yeah. And, and he so was like, who would marry matter. for money? And he goes for Adam. Don't go for the weak link. Don't go for that. Li- don't go for the lo- lowest hanging fruit there. No, you know, don't just go for Adam. Yeah. Adam gets all worked. He's like, Ma- I was happy that Adams immediately said, no, you're projecting Mike. I was like, yeah, good for you, Adam. Yeah. Don't let him also, bully you. Also, don't usually like Adam as we, we've expressed mm-hmm. before, but that was a good one for him. But Mike just like loses yeah, it. Yeah, well, until just... I thought he, uh, until I thought Destiny was going to punch him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Adam, stay out of this. Stay out of the big people. You know, the adults are fighting. Stay out of it, baby. <laughs> you were going to get knocked out there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so Mike loses his mind. He feels like they're coming for him. He starts to tell Reza that the font that Destiny used to print out the questions is uh-huh. Reza's font, which cracked me up. So I was like, <laughs> it's just font, man. <laughs> it's just font. However, like, uh, however, let me open up my Word document and look for Reza font. <laughs> yeah. However, I do believe that Destiny ran the questions by Reza. Oh, they live yeah. across the street from each other. Yeah, they for sure came up with it together. Yeah, no and Reza way they was like, so Reza being like, it's not my fault. I it wasn't me. It's like, yes, it may not have been technically you, but but it could have been technically you. It so technically I mean, for you. all of the times where Reza has falsely blamed somebody else, accused somebody else, and we've gone down that path, I think it's. It's okay if once in a while he gets falsely accused of something and gets we we believe that because of what you have done in the past, Reza. I did think it was rich that Mike yeah. just came in really hot, was really angry at everyone, starting to started to call Destiny a liar. <laughs> And then was like, we're a family, okay? We're a family. And we need to let go of the past and move on. And I was like, Mike, literally nobody's talking about the past here. We're all making jokes about each other. Like, what is wrong with you? And that's when Paulina says, you're making yourself look like an idiot. Yeah. And she gets up to go to use the bathroom. The girls go after her just to see if she's okay. She's obviously not well. 
Yeah. And Mike gets more mad because the girls are supporting Paulina. Yeah. And that's the part that scared the shit out of me. And I could feel Destiny's rage. I weirdly yeah. got emotional watching it. Yeah. Watching yeah. Destiny tell my she that, that was true her. rage. I mean, Destiny was truly upset. She could barely breathe. When he she said, was... "When he said I could buy and sell you, my yeah. blood boiled." Yeah, and I first of all, he said, "Destiny, you couldn't afford me." I'm like, "What kind of a talk is that? What do you mean you she couldn't afford you? Are you on sale? What are you? What are you talking about?" No, and about? also that proves that Mike just is like the biggest money sponge. It's all transactional. No, but also it also proves that Mike, even as a son, is just a money sponge. He's just a black yeah. bit of money because. Because yeah, his parents yeah, yeah. keep having to spend money to bail his right, ass out. Right, 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 right. So yeah, maybe we couldn't afford you, Mike, because you're a waste of money. That's what yes, you are. Yes, yes. You're yeah, you're a money pit. <laughs> exactly. The party ends with Mike is telling Mike is standing his ground. He's waiting for Polly to come out. Destiny is pushing him out. And then when finally Destiny pushes him out, he's like, Whoa, whoa, did you see she attacked me? Oh my God. And then he gets into the van and then he says to Paulina, Don't say one word until we're home. Mm hmm. That's fucking scary. Yeah, I also that's scary. think it's interesting that like the very first episode, I think it was, where we saw Paulina and Mike fight after leaving yeah, yeah, Jay's yeah. place. We never saw what happened at the end of that party. Yeah, like, we don't know if the they got into the same car or not. She, he said she was he she he was trying to get her into it. Mm -hmm. But then what happened? Did he get into the same car or not? I don't remember. I don't know. But she left, and then she said she wasn't going to get into the car, and then the episode ended. I saw that yeah. you pulled out your jade roller, mm -hmm. and I pulled out my dumb jade scoop. So mm -hmm. here we go. We need to just <laughs> deal this with This is stressful. These. Yeah. <laughs> this is stressful. Listeners, I needed it. This is not a visual medium, so we just want you to know that this is a good time, if you're listening, to pull out your roller of choice and just squeeze it against your face where you feel the most tension, because my God. <laughs> This was this was too much. <laughs> Arthur, you're really using a lot of aggression with your role. Because <laughs> uh, it got me, it got me very stressed out because of where it went and how hot it got for Destiny. I felt for Destiny. I felt like I felt like her personal space was violated too. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, we'll have to see what happens if next week they come back and they say, you know, I apologize and I hundred and one hundred percent, one thousand percent apologize and I'll never do that again. And he say and Destiny forgives him, I will be so upset. This is not something that you forgive right away without any any consequence for Mike. This is just too much. And if Paulina is still with Mike and is still doing whatever she needs to do, you know, I don't know if I can feel sympathy for Paulina if she just keeps at it. Eventually, people like Destiny are going to give up and they're going to be like, you chose the bed, you want to lie in it. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about Married to Medicine. So it's the season finale. Mm -hmm. The ladies are in Jekyll Island, which, by the way, I'm like planning a vacation there. It looked so beautiful. Right? I don't know what resort they were in. I wanted They were to at the Jekyll – I think it's called the Jekyll Island Resort Club or something. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, in Georgia, and yeah. I, want, I want to go to there because yeah. it looks very beautiful. Me too. Let's go. Let's okay. do our podcast from there. <laughs> Let's set up a Patreon. <laughs> we'll take our top 10 listeners to Jekyll Island. But you'd have to pay for yourselves. <laughs> yes. At most, at most, we will pay for one drink and it won't be like Anila where she puts the entire tab of alcohol mm -hmm. uh, to one lucky listener's okay, hotel room. But see, I was, I'm conflicted with it. On one hand, <laughs> I think that was, oh my God. God, how could you do that? That's not right. Why would you do that? I mean, from the point of view of Anila and Lisa Nicole's fight, I'm like, Anila, stop being petty. Yeah. It's only it's only four hundred dollars or six hundred dollars. Um, yeah. which if you just invoice her, and if she doesn't pay you, you have legal you have legal ways of going after it. Stop making a big deal about six hundred dollars, right? Or it's not even six hundred dollars; less than that. She's adding the four hundred that she lost 
from our wallet to that, right? So it's <laughs> really the invoices for 200 bucks or something like that, right? Yeah. So just do that. Invoice her and see if she pays you or not. But on the other hand, if I ever had to get into this situation where I dislike somebody, mm-hmm. what a great prank. It's an excellent prank. And it's also the type of shady behavior that gets you a full-time role on the show. Right? That's what gets you on the show is when mm-hmm. you got chummy with Quad, you got chummy with Heavenly. Mm -hmm. They love you for the shady shit. Yeah. You came into the season with Heavenly thinking that you might be racist. (laughs) Yeah. That's true. Now you are hobnobbing and drinking Vove Clinket with... (laughs) (laughs) So I thought it was great, but let me tell you something. Anila, if you're listening... Stop talking in AAV. It yeah. sounds terrible. I yeah. don't care if you're from Georgia. You are not talking like a woman from Georgia. You are talking like a woman who's watched too many episodes of Drag Race and now you think you can talk like black women. Yeah. It's not how you talk. Please stop. It was very uncomfortable. It makes me yeah. cringe every time. Yeah, me too. And then also when the jig is up and when the prank is done, oh, God. pay the fuck up. Yeah. You already got her to feel uncomfortable and she, you got her and it was yeah. funny at least know when to just I would have respected her more if she had just laughed and said fine I'll pay for it but yeah. I don't know why I'm paying for it I didn't drink it or whatever right but at least you know what Heavenly did at the end and like I don't know anything about it but here's 300 bucks <laughs> yeah it was just really and then she was like go ahead call the cops yeah. you're the one that's gonna you and she didn't say you she said you the one that's gonna go to jail because you're on the news and i was yeah. like you need to stop talking that way and yeah. also think about what the fuck you're saying right like i did also laugh though when carrie of all people was like lisa nicole to lisa nicole she was like don't be a karen don't call the cops on her <laughs> <laughs> the one white lady is yeah. like, don't be a Karen. The one white lady in Confederate <laughs> bikini. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, Carrie might be hilarious because they go on this like <laughs> Carrie is hilarious as long as the story is not about Carrie. Carrie's a good friend off to keep on. She is. Because they go on this like bird watching thing or boat ride and <laughs> they see the seagulls laugh like heavenly. <laughs> <laughs> and heavenly knew too. She didn't get mad. She <laughs> just she just looked so uncomfortable and stared she she stared daggers at Carrie. you know heavenly is appreciative of a good dig that yeah. isn't actually fully insulting like right it's weird she appreciates good humor she does yes she does she does <laughs> I think Heavenly was blown away by the <laughs> by the humor to yeah. really get fully mad. So she was like weighing it in her mind, but still throwing da- daggers. Yes, <laughs> Carrie. She was like, "Oh, that was a good one," but I hate you so much for right now for that good one. Yeah, but that was so so true. <laughs> Yeah, 100%. <laughs> the producers playing Heaven. Yeah, the editors laugh. knew too. They were like, "Cue the laughing." It was, it was perfect. <laughs> <clears throat> oh my god i don't watch it with my dogs but i want to watch heavenly speak with my dogs around <laughs> and see if that affects her she's so high pitch i think i have a high pitch voice but she is so high pitch no she's next level <laughs> so then unfortunately the husbands arrive yes Oh, and God, they're not the bad. fun husbands, too. daddy and eugene didn't show up i know cecil is fun cecil is fun but not Curtis, Curtis, Curtis uh, and Scott. Yeah. So they have this dinner and the ladies start to basically cross-examine. Immediately. Immediately. Like, immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, please do not open this up with Heavenly starting to ask questions. Like that is like, maybe, maybe go with Jackie or Simone. Like yeah. somebody who's No, husband no, there, none like- of them could do that. I think it would have, been, have to be Carrie or Anila who bring that up because – Everybody else, all of them are like that. They would have, all of them, if, even if it was Jackie or Simone, they would have gone right in. Yeah, Simone would have gone is, right in. But the difference is that the husbands were there. So I feel like there's sort of this weird, like, respect. Uh-huh. Like, we're all couples here having a conversation with another couple situation. Right. Whereas Heavenly and Quad are just like, and I'm not saying that 
there's anything wrong with heavily and quad doing it. It's just from a man's perspective that could probably feel more like an attack, which is fine. Scott deserves yeah. it. Yeah. Scott's a piece of shit. Yeah. The ladies start to ask about pictures of naked ladies. Are, do they ask there? No, no, they, they ask about the life coach. Life coach, yeah, because they don't know about the naked ladies until the next morning. Yes, you're right. So they ask about the life coach, and Scott gets starts to get really, really defensive, and he gets really upset. And the most shocking thing about it is that he gets up to start to talk to Contessa. He walks over to Contessa. Away. But I didn't know if he was walking over to like just hold her hand or was he asking her to leave? Contessa, though, took it as this is my cue. I need to leave now. He wants me to leave now. Yes, which was really He didn't scary. say that. He didn't say let's leave. He just walked over around. I thought he was just going to come around and just hold her hand or talk to her. Sit hug close her. To her. Hug her. No, the uh, as he walked around, she got scared and she just got up and walked. Yes. Yeah. That was the part that was really scary. And she kept saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I dragged you all into this. I'm sorry I dragged you all into this to the ladies. And that yeah. is what I think was alarming to Quad and Heavenly too, which is Contessa's not like this. She's not somebody who is so meek. Like mm -hmm. she is a tough woman and she knows how to stand up for herself. So her all of a sudden falling apart, it's mm -hmm. weird and scary. So Quad and Heavenly later go back to the room, check in on Contessa, which is really awkward because Scott's in the room right next to them. Contessa's in the office and they find out that it's not a female life coach that he's been seeing. It's some guy named Kevin Johnson. That sounds like a motel, like a Howard That's Johnson, Howard Kevin Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> well, Kevin Johnson sounds like the lead character on a show like King of Queens. Yeah, I think that his name is Kevin James. I think that actor. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. But yeah. like, you know, it's like, okay, it's, what is this? Like a character from Home Alone? Like, what name is Kevin Johnson? <laughs> he was like, call well, him. He just, he call just Kevin. Kevin. Yeah, call, call you Kevin Johnson. Like, what? How could you go from saying her and you know you were caught on camera? Yeah. You were on camera that day. You saw the cameras and you said a woman. And yep. then now you're changing your story at the very last minute. Yep. How do you think you will not get caught? It's really bizarre. And I, it and then... looks so awkward. And for me, it's like you are so insecure that you did something wrong. You don't want to admit it. And then you're coming up with excuses that don't even make sense. At least come up with the name. Say this is, come up with the story. I could come up with a hundred different ways to spin that if I had to. Yeah. He tells the ladies to stop talking, which is really fucking uncomfortable. So Quad and Heavenly leave. And the next morning, we hear that Carrie overheard Contessa fighting with Scott, screaming about why were you sending pictures? Why were you sending nude pictures? What's with the naked pictures on your phone? And Scott's denying the whole thing. So Carrie tells Toya and Toya and Carrie go to check in on Contessa. Contessa will not let the cameras in. Scott mm -hmm. is being absolutely horrible. Uh -huh. And Contessa says, like, yeah, we were fighting and I don't know what to do. And she's basically in a standstill and she can't get the truth out of her husband and she says mm. the trust has been broken yeah. scott goes to the men to talk to them and curtis says the dumbest fucking thing curtis has ever said you know curtis has said a fair share of real dumb fucking things he and says curtis is one to speak by the way yeah yes one number one yeah yeah he says Oh, well, the women, they heard Contessa's side of the story. They never talked to you before they started asking questions. Motherfucker, what the fuck do you think they were trying to do when they were asking him those questions? They were trying to talk to him. Right. And why He's the, the one who got up and walked away from the table. Yes. And the women don't necessarily need to talk to Scott, but they give him the respect of sitting down at the table and talking to him about it and asking yeah. him questions because Contessa's been crying to them all week. Yeah. So there's no resolution with Scott and Contessa. And then we get a whole bunch of end of season updates mm -hmm. with Heavenly on a boat with her son. Simone is yelling at her kid and nobody's listening. I loved how she got in his face. <laughs> yes. I, I like, could hear her. I mean, 
Yeah, it was like, that's exactly what I do. I get between the screen, the <laughs> iPad screen and the kid and put my big ass face, ugly mug in between. and say, can you not hear? And they still will not move their face away. They're like, she will wait for me to move my head. She will not move back and say, what are you doing? Why are you putting your face in front of me? No, she will wait for me to move back, move out, so she can continue watching whatever she was watching. You're so bad. <laughs> Kids are the worst. Jackie has a podcast. So rude, uh, Jackie. Get out of our get off of our jock. <laughs> like, why, Jackie? You were making you wrote a book. You were yeah. doing some kind of vaginal, you know, some vibrators or something. Yeah. And now you're doing a podcast. Pick a lane, Jackie. Pick well, a lane. Also, who's going to pay for all that home renovation? Not Curtis. Yeah, that's true. But also, pick a lane. Pick a damn lane. Get off our dock, please. Yes. The Harrises are traveling, and they've put their house on the market, but they refuse to talk about why. Hmm. Could be because Anila moved into the neighborhood, and she has the biggest house. Her house cost $3 million. And there's zero furniture. So that's another million dollars worth of furniture that she will need. Unless she's smart and shops at Wayfair. Oh, yes. Maybe the, maybe she can do an Instagram post about it. Yeah, and then but, she'll maybe get some money back for it. Mm-hmm. How'd you like her house? I thought it was really cool, but I feel like getting zebra print counters in your kitchen is a choice that you will regret. In like 10 years. I think it's going to become tiger print because that's a desi house. All of that white counter is going to be filled in haldi. It's going to be (laughs) completely yellow with turmeric. (laughs) Turmeric stains, you know. That's true. That's why I have black countertops. I have uh, I have a brownish green countertop. I will never buy a white countertop or white cabinets because turmeric, man. We work with turmeric. We touch everything with our turmeric hands. So yeah. Yeah. there's a lot of yellow that goes around. <laughs> and then we get at the very end, everyone is shocked by the Instagram post from Contessa because Contessa's on vacation with her husband and everything seems to be just fine. Yeah. I was like, that's uncomfortable. Yeah. It is uncomfortable when you get sort of dragged into your friend's mess and then your friend ends up going back to that person mm-hmm. because it's ultimately you that then looks like an asshole. And I, I think that's the same thing that's happening with Destiny, right? Destiny right. is hearing it from Paulina and then she's being forced to awkwardly communicate with the husband. Something yeah, very similar has happened to me before like yeah. that yeah. where somebody confided in me something really dark about their relationship and mm-hmm. then I had to hang out with the couple multiple times and pretend like I didn't know that. And I was like, Oof, I want to mm. jump out the window. Mm. Don't do that to people. Okay. I'm not going to remember. <laughs> no, I'm not talking to you. Next time. Next no. time I will drag you into it. No, shut up. I'm not talking about anybody <laughs> that you and I know, including you or me. <laughs> It's just been, it was really awkward um, because it was a play date. And I was like, please don't tell me this during a play date. Now this is all I'm thinking about. And like the husband hangs out with my husband all the time. So obviously I told my husband, my husband was like, what? I hang out with him all the time. Now I have to look at his face. I said, hey, I have to look at her face. You have to look at his face. And now you have to hold this burden too because I can't be the only one. (laughs) So... Uh, so that's that. Yeah. Very stressful. Yeah. You know what? It was Pulling very out stressful. our jade rollers during it these stressful episodes is a really good idea. Yeah, it is a good idea. I couldn't Move take all it these anymore. lymphatic deposits around. I needed this because this was, uh, I was stressed out about talking about it. I wanted to talk about it right after I watched it on Sunday night. I was like, I need to talk about it now because <laughs> I needed to get all of it out of my Yes. body now before it got too um toxic if i kept it in i would get too toxic yeah so, yeah so there we go well mm-hmm. guys this is it for this week unfortunately we will not have a housewives episode this week this is it this is our only episode for the week we won't be talking about family karma or housewives maybe maybe we can do an instagram live or something for our family karma sure. recap on friday Sure, we can do that. It's you who's on vacation. I know. I'll be in Texas, so I may or may not. We may yeah. or may not do an Instagram Once you live. get there, let's see what the situation is once you get there. 
We shall see. Maybe Thursday night or Friday. We'll let you Maybe. Guys know. It depends on the episode, too. If we watch the episode and we feel like, oh, shoot, we have to talk about it because it's so much happened. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I saw rumors. Did I dream of it or was there rumors that Richa and Vishal got married? Excuse me? There was like somebody posted some pictures and said this was like a uh, wedding day preparation pics of Vishal. Yeah, and- I told you that. Oh, you told me that. Okay. <laughs> last episode okay so yeah did they get married do we know no they didn't get married but they got more engagement pictures taken more engaged okay (laughs) they got more engaged than they've ever been engaged before so that was Mm -hmm. that yeah i do think that we'll have to see how rich uh how the next episode is but also there's no roni this week so yes that's true but we do get an explosive beverly hills episode hopefully Mm-hmm. explosive in quotations because what does that even mean <laughs> who knows it'll just be erica saying P- lies P- and the women pecan i just imagine pk having too many hamburgers no don't <laughs> you're ruining pk and hamburgers for me how dare you well i was gonna explosive. say the the episode is just gonna be erica lying and the women just deadpan looking at each other and just making faces yeah. and not yeah. saying anything it's and- gonna be a bunch i think it's gonna be frustrating for us because we all have 90 percent of the world agrees that erica knew yes <laughs> and so it is going to be hard to sit back and watch her lie i agree because it's gonna be lies it's all gonna be lies so. it's all gonna be lies yeah, I, what I'm saying is that I predict we'll need our roller again. Yes, when exactly. we do get the, get around to talking about it. So we're not going to have a Friday episode, a Saturday episode, or we might yeah. be able to have. Uh, oh no, we won't be able to have a Tuesday episode or Wednesday episode next week either. Basically, this is your vacation last- is very inconvenient. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You know that I cannot do it by myself, and I I'm too, I'm not good enough to do it with Tom or so. You, you are know, good Kate, enough to do no, it with them. I won't even remember. They would have to do your role of keeping track of what happened in the episode, <laughs> <laughs> which I don't know. I can barely keep track of what happened. What happens in my life? All right. Well, forget about other people. So we will we will talk to you on July first. Yeah. The week of July first, and we we'll and we will we will we will cover what we haven't covered. Yes, we will. We'll we would never skip over so, content. Yeah, don't don't leave us. We're just going for a week. Please don't. I'm yeah, so don't worried forget about gonna go. That's in a week. We're gonna leave. Yeah, we're not gonna release an episode for a week. Everybody will assume that we've died, and yeah. then they will stop listening to us. Yeah. Or. They'll mm-hmm. assume that we've died and suddenly everybody will want to listen to us because remember those two dead girls? And oh. then and then we're going to feel weird about coming back and recording because we're going to be like, whoops, you guys all thought we died and we had much more followers after being fake dead. Did you take a gummy or something? <laughs> like this is, this is going down a path. I was like, where is this going? <laughs> I may have pressed my jade ruler, roller too hard against my face. Okay, so we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.